Split squats should be a lot higher up in everyone's hierarchy of exercises. Today, we're gonna to discuss why they're so valuable and how you can implement them. Before we get stuck into it, shout out for my fresh fade, Aces Barbershop. Aces Barbershop is the preferred barbershop of two out of four strength culture coaches. Shout out Dex, shout out Dylan, hit them up. Split squats are a great family of exercises for a number of reasons. For powerlifters and strength enthusiasts, they offer a great range of supplementary exercises to the main heavy lifts. When people look to add accessory exercises to their program, they often look to try and find close variants or similar exercises to the heavy lifts. But we reckon you're probably better off finding exercises that are different to the main lifts. Doing squats and deadlifts twice a week is probably gonna be more than enough specificity for most people. Instead, when we try to look to our accessory exercises, we should probably be looking for exercises that have a good stimulus to fatigue ratio. Split squats definitely tick this box. The stimulus to fatigue ratio is based around the fact that all exercises give us both stimulus as well as fatigue. Stimulus, think tension on the target muscle. Fatigue, think more joint aches and pain and fatigue, as well as just the general amount of energy taken out of our body. For the most part, exercises that are heavier tend to be a bit higher fatigue with not as much stimulus. Split squats for the most part aren't like this. With split squats we can use a lot less weight. We tend to find it easy to place tension on the target muscles and when we finish our split squats or once we've re we're recovering from them it's more so our muscles that have really been kind of worked rather than our overall body in terms of kind of fatigue and joint aches and pains. It's much less likely for us to feel these with split squats. As such, they are a great addition to a powerlifting program or a strength program where we're already squatting and deadlifting heavy as we can get a great training outcome from them without having to use a lot of weight. And this serves as both a physical and mental break because once we've done some really hard and heavy squats and deadlifts to then have to go and do another exercise really heavy like for example if we do, we do a high bar squat after a low bar squat or something like that it's just going to take a lot out of us another example might be doing like really heavy rdls after doing hard deadlifts this is both physical and mental in terms of its benefits. Now, if you are not a powerlifter and your training goals are more based around building muscle, split squats are definitely useful as being attached to performance on the big traditional lifts really isn't essential. For a bodybuilder or someone just looking to build muscle, if we can find exercises that put a great amount of tension on the muscles that we are looking to grow, whilst also not requiring us to use a whole lot of weight, this is a big win. This especially becomes important if we're in a hard diet phase if we're not on a lot of calories, to try and attack a hard session of heavy squats or deadlifts can be very difficult. Split squats are gonna be a lot more useful in these times when our calories aren't that high. We can still get a, a good training outcome without needing as much energy to bring into our session. Another example of when we, mo we don't want our strength training to take too much out of us is for someone who might be playing another sport or doing some hard cardio. If we're kind of running multiple times a week, we don't want our sessions in the gym to take too much out of us so we can ban balance our workload across the week. This is a time where we might want to opt for a split squat over a regular squat. And another benefit of split squats is the ability for us to kind of work out differences side for side. If we're trying to obviously work towards hypertrophy goals, it's easier for us to target one one leg in isolation with a split squat versus we can't really do that in a regular squat. They also allow for a level of mind-muscle connection in terms of individual legs that we're never really gonna get on a bilateral variation. Now that we know why split squats are great, we're going to start to talk about how we can implement them. We're going to run through a regular split squat as well as two different variations of split squats that allow us to bias different areas. The first variation we're going to run through is just a simple goblet split squat. Even if you are strong enough to load these with a barbell or an SSB, there's definitely some value in starting in your first few weeks or months of trying split squats, loading these with a goblet. The goblet loading makes it easier for us to find a nice stacked position that we're looking for when we're moving under load. The reason is placing the weight out in front of us makes it easy for us to pull our ribs down. If we were to go straight to an SSB bar or a barbell, we might not find this straight away. So it's good to have a, maybe one block where we give goblet split squats a try 
get good at setting our brace for split squats and then we can transfer over to one of the other variations. The benefit also is that getting good at bracing with split squats, finding that stacked position, has transfer over to our big lifts if we're trying to improve our bracing on the bigger lifts. A good starting place when setting up a goblet split squat is to try and have 90 degrees at our knee and 90 degrees at our hip. Once we've kind of mastered these ones and we're doing them well, we can move over to loading them with two dumbbells and then eventually we'll end up loading them with an SSB and this is where we'll do most of our split squats as we get stronger with them. We did mention that a benefit of split squats is that we can get a lot of stimulus without having to use much weight, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try and challenge ourselves. We still need to make sure that we're working towards a high RPE. An easy way for us to do this is to throw in some AMRAPs. The good thing about split squats, particularly those first variations like a goblet or a two dumbbell is if we have to completely fail, it's easy for us to kind of drop the weight. It's a pretty safe exercise for us to fail. So it's definitely useful to include some of these to make sure we are working hard enough to fail here. Split squats are one of those exercises where you might do a set of 15 and by rep eight, they already feel hard, but obviously when it comes to training hard and RPE based training, trying to reach a few reps shy of failure, it's not about when it feels hard, it's about when we're actually approaching failure. So it's important for us to make sure we're throwing some AM reps in here to make sure our RPE rating is at least decent. Um, so we're not you know, far, far away from failure and, and leaving a lot of gains on the table. The second variation of a split squat that we're gonna run through is a heels elevated Hatfield SSB split squat. Bit of a mouthful, but it's still an important exercise for us to make sure we're getting right. This isn't a variation we can choose to really hit our quads. The first time I did these, and as I continue to do them, I feel my quads did nothing more than this exercise. Does that make sense? Nothing more than this exercise. So the first step to setting up this exercise is for us to have a small heel wedge. If you have a heel wedge in your gym, you can use that. If not, you can just place a small plate underneath your heel. Now, the important thing is this heel wedge will allow us to get our knee more forward, but it's not gonna magically do that for us. We need to make sure we're actively trying to keep our knee forward to make sure we're getting the most out of this exercise. The second thing for us to do is to use the rack to pull ourselves forward. When we talk about kind of balance for the bigger lifts, squats, deadlifts, we talk about mid foot pressure. We wanna throw that out the window for this exercise. We're not looking for that, we're looking for more so pressure in the front of our foot. In order for us to execute this correctly though, we're going to have our hands on the rack because if we were to kind of shift our weight forward onto our toes, without this, we may fall over and balance might become an issue. If you want to understand further why external stability is important for hypertrophy, you can check out the video we did previously here maybe here we'll see where Donnie puts it in of all the split squat variations this is probably the one where we're going to use the least amount of weight so if you're not using a whole lot of weight with this one that's kind of normal something to keep in mind with this one also is the technique is quite hard it's very easy as the set gets harder for you to not allow your knee to stay as forward and just revert to a more normal split squat stance so make sure as you approach failure your technique doesn't change. Yes, the speed of our reps is probably going to come down, but we want the technique to look the same from the first rep up to the last rep. If we can do kind of 15 reps, but then our technique starts to decrease in quality, we probably should have stopped at maybe 10 or 11 reps and stopped when we couldn't keep our technique the same. My explanation of this exercise is gonna be quite similar to my explanation of the previous one, except for instead of trying to get our knee heaps forward, this time we're trying to keep our shin vertical. We don't want to see our knee really traveling forward at all. As we sit back, we want to start with a vertical shin and maintain a vertical shin the whole time. Once again, we're going to use the racks to allow this. So the balance isn't a factor and we can really sit back whilst kind of maintaining technique and control. Something I didn't mention with the previous split squat variation, but that's important with all split squats, is not to kind of drop down and bounce out of the bottom of these. We want to make sure we're controlling the way down. Kind of bouncing out and trying to riding the rebound is great for our ego, but is not good for putting tension on the target muscles bang and once again with these ones we want to make sure our technique is consistent as we approach failure if we're doing these hard and doing these well our glutes should start to get tired as we work up in reps but we want to make sure that we're not kind of shifting technique and then allowing our knee to travel forward we want to make sure our technique is consistent all the way through and that we're really keeping the emphasis on our glutes so just to recap, split squats are an awesome kind of group of exercises. They definitely really should be up there when we're deciding to pick lower body exercises. They're 
useful for a variety of reasons for a variety of training populations. If we haven't done that much before, we should probably start with a goblet split squat, focus on maintaining a stacked position. And then from there, we can work on loading these with an SSB bar eventually. On top of that, if we want to shift the bias towards our quads, small heel elevation, and really focus on keeping that knee forward. By contrast, if we want these to target our glutes, think vertical shin and really sitting our hip back. Thanks for watching guys. This is our first video filmed post snap lockdown in Melbourne. I'm sure all of us here down in Melbourne are excited to be back in the gym. Hope you all enjoy your first week of training. If you like the video, please chuck us a like, comment down below. And other than that, happy lifting.